2021 is coming to a close, and with a year full of great new music, I want to talk about my top five favorite Vaporwave albums released this past year. The genre in general has been in an interesting spot for a good while now. I don't think there really is a definitive answer to what Vaporwave, like, concretely even is anymore, but more so it's just a simple way to define this collective group of albums, artists, or labels that you listen to in this specific corner of internet music all under one umbrella term, despite how much they seem to break the boundaries of what old school Vaporwave was known to be like. And I don't find anything wrong with that. I mean, you know my channel, I'm a fan of categorizing things into a genre or even sub micro genres or whatever. I find the whole concept of that really fun in a way. But I think you'll see what I mean by this with the albums that really felt special to me this year. We've come a long way from the Floral Shop and the Echo Jams era releases and what made 2021 interesting for me at least is that I still find myself always loving that old school classic Vaporwave vibe or album building formula, yet at the same time I've also become so drawn to artists that are taking the tried and true Vaporwave tropes grabs maybe even the slightest bit of inspiration from them, and just creates something that breaks the barriers of the genre into something else entirely. Obviously, I'm not saying these five albums are like the definitive, these are the best albums to come out of the scene. A list like this is always gonna be subjective, of course, and these are just five albums that I know I personally played a ton of over the year, and like they just really meant something to me and stuck out. And of course, I would love to hear your favorite Vaporwave albums from this year, or better yet, just your favorite albums in general from the past year in the comments below. We've been blessed with so much great new music in 2021, and I would love to make the comment section of this video a place for people to discover even more new music. And really quick before we begin, it is holiday time, people, and I know buying gifts could be tricky. I know money, you know, you're trying to save some, some good cash. You don't want to spend all that cash on a bunch of gifts for people that you probably don't even want to get them gifts in the first place, but I got you. Use my code PAD15 over at Vapor95 for a really nice discount on all things Vaporwave, from apparel to housewares, accessories. They got a whole bunch of cool shit over there, so go on and check them out. Also, Check out their Darknet blog while you're there if you want to see today's topic in written form. So yeah, just a whole bunch of cool content over there. Go check it out. And uh, with that being said, let's kick 2021 out the door and end this year with my top five favorite Vaporwave albums of the year. Number five. One of the things that can make a Vaporwave album feel so special or magical is when the project gives off a feeling as if you've stumbled upon something that hasn't been touched in years. Dated or aged textures on an album art and Japanese track list that I can't translate myself, all something I don't believe I'll ever get bored of. Released back in August, compact disc stereo dramas Sands of Time is nothing short of euphoric. Slushwave is another genre that has just taken a complete hold of my musical taste this past year, and I don't really remember how I discovered this album in particular, but ever since I did, I've just found myself throwing it on all the time. There's like this 2 or 3 p.m. block during the workday where I just get super tired, no matter how much coffee I drink, and Sands of Time wakes me up more than any amount of caffeine can ever do. With 12 tracks making up the album, Sands of Time features a wide range of ancient instruments like flutes, harps, bells, and chimes, all looped at just the right amount of time to never overextend each track's stay within your ears. They pop in, they do their job and they leave. Simple as that. I love the album R2, projects that feature images straight up ripped from like an old VHS recording containing footage of who knows what and probably only ever seen by like a handful of people. It's beautiful, mysterious, thought provoking, and the imagery always plays a role in how this music makes me feel. Sands of Time warps me to a shoreline on a cloudy day, the cleanest beach with nothing but a message in a bottle washed up on the sand in the distance. And despite my best efforts on walking over to that bottle, that bottle is unreachable, seemingly moving further back into the distance as I get closer and closer to it. Track four on here, Spiritual Lagoon, is one of my favorites. Looping piano chords paired with what seems to be a stretched out choir synth thing in the background, all joined in by the same repeated vocal phrase and more celestial instruments here and there. Each track 
is so unique from one another. They are all just beautifully colored seashells sprinkled throughout this beach. I am in love with this thing. Thank you, Compact Disc, for introducing me to such a musical world. And I know I'll be throwing this on many times more in 2022. Number four. Many may look at this release, Nighttime Television Service by National Network, as nothing more than a simple signal wave drop that doesn't really do anything special. But with many releases coming out of this cozy and fuzzy vaporwave subgenre, it's all about your personal experience tied to when or how you first discovered it. For those who don't know, Signal Wave takes old commercials and or delicate happy-go-lucky jingles and songs and creates an almost sound collage between dozens of different samples in one track. Some artists can get really crazy with this, while others just keep it extremely simple and just play the one sample throughout with nothing more than some extra effects laid on top. So there was this one month during the past summer where my girlfriend and I woke up to a tornado warning alert on our phones at like 5.30 in the morning. And the alert said that the warning was to last for about an hour or so from what I remember. So we went downstairs and sat away from any windows or whatever the text said to do. We really don't get any crazy weather like that around here. So we just followed everything the alert said just to be safe. And having a lot of work I could knock out anyways, I decided to boot up my work laptop and just get a head start on the day before I had to log in at nine. Wanting some background music, I headed over to one of my favorite places to find great music online, a YouTube channel known as Channel Surfing, and decided to click a random album to play to keep me company. After scrolling through, I saw the album cover for nighttime television service, and I remember clicking it because the color of the sky matched the color of the sky outside of our windows at that point early in the morning. And what I heard next just perfectly paired with the moment we were finding ourselves in. Nighttime television service is exactly what the title states it to be. It's six tracks that feel as if they are emanating out of a CRT TV, all from a channel that is only playing repeated news segments from the day before or paid programming. The samples used are super warm and cozy, yet there's this constant buzzing present throughout the whole album that gives off a sort of eerie feeling behind the curtains. All of this just hit so hard as we waited for some tornado to like run through our streets. And every time I pop this album back on, I always think of that morning. Nothing ended up happening luckily, and it all led to this beautiful sunny morning. And ever since then, I've always kept this album in my back pocket whenever the sky hits that same brooding blue color. The album is beautifully brittle. I love when Signal Wave feels as if it would crumble at the slightest touch, and this album has just that. There really isn't too much to break down about the album, pretty much just recycled samples glazed over with some fuzz, but to me, it's an extremely relaxing yet haunting 20 or so minutes to keep by your side. For fans of analog horror, this definitely gives off that unique vibe in an audio sense, so give this unbelievably pretty yet crushingly lonely album a listen whenever you get the chance. Before we continue this video, I just want to give a big shout out to everyone who supports me over at Patreon. If you wanna help support the channel and what I do, as well as receive a bunch of cool exclusive rewards like access to our patron-only Discord server, Club Chennington, head on over to my Patreon page and consider becoming a member today. If you can or don't want to, it is all good. Just having you here today and watching one of my videos is always more than I can ever ask for. So thank you so much for the support and hanging out with me today. And with that being said, let's get back to the countdown. Number three a really great release this year and definitely my favorite album from 100% electronica super homie fm skyline the drop of illuminations back in september had a whole bunch of hype surrounding it and it definitely delivered fm skyline knows the sound they are loved for and seems to just expand and play with it more and more upon every release the main goal is always to play on the idea of nostalgia with fm skyline's direction whether that be with the album's artwork and imagery or just the audio itself. And what is so refreshing with this artist in particular is that they seem to somehow breathe newness into what nostalgia can sound like. Despite that concept kind of not making sense in the first place, like new nostalgia doesn't really seem to make sense as a term. I don't know, but that's what FM Skyline does. And that, that chill wave blended into vaporwave style has been done so many times before 
always trying to replicate past auras, feelings, and vibes onto the modern day internet. Sounds that you grew up with just blended into a new way, I guess. And we've seen this a whole bunch of times on 100% Electronica specifically, with some really fun releases from artists like Satin Sheets, George Clinton, and Dan Mason, for example. And not putting any of them down at all, but I personally find FM Skyline's sound to be my favorite out of the bunch. It's just crisp and translucent and unique. And that blend of the all too familiar 80s drum machines scattered throughout these rising synths and pads, those shiny and pearlescent textures making these songs sound as round and smooth as the metallic spheres present on the artwork. Everything just feels like it's going for a ride. Every single individual stem, instrument, whatever it is, and I think that just gives it so much personality, and you see that the most from FM Skyline, in my opinion, with this album right here. Tracks like Veil feel truly chilly, a joyride down some slopes in the middle of winter. Classique gives off this virtual jungle feel in a way, a blocky rainforest full of overly saturated, rendered frogs and birds making up the wonderful place you find yourself jogging through. You can find the dedication put into every single part of FM Skyline's work to make this tracklist as fun as possible for the listener. Each separate sound rises and then falls in unique ways and makes everything so animated, yet not obnoxious or loud. Intermezzo lurks around corners and feels like an underground sewer level to a point-and-click PC game from the 90s. The whole album feels delicate, but it's full of life and color. I first discovered FM Skyline through Advanced Memory Suite back in 2019. And if you haven't heard that one either, you definitely got a great two for one coming up for you with this pair of albums. The physicals released for Illuminations looked great as well, and I just hope to see more FM Skyline on 100% Electronica in the future. It really seems like the perfect home for the artists. And uh, yeah, just, just really great stuff with FM and um, Illuminations, really, really good album. Number two. All right, I, I really don't know how much more praise I can give and respect I can have for UK slush rave artist Desert Sand Feels Warm at Night at this point. And his latest work released back in July, Piano Soliloquy, is nothing short of magnificent. Desert has been making music for years now, but his recent direction of sample-free slush wave has elevated him to a level in the online sphere I don't think anyone saw coming, especially as fast as it happened. With a couple of these sample free slush wave releases under his belt, he seems to just get better and better at his craft with each release, and that is definitely the case with Piano Soliloquy. Desert gives us nine hypnotizing tracks that ascend over one another as you progress through the tracklist. As with his other sample free slush, you're going to find your reverb coated, pitch down vocals on top of heavenly echoing piano keys, those splashy drums we've become oh so used to and an assortment of nostalgically warm pads. I get lost every time with the track Heavenly Melody. Each sound or instrument just glows apart from one another. The contrast between sounds is so rich, and the way Desert places each individual piece of audio must be applauded. Everything has its own space to shine, taking their turn to talk, and being respectful to one another, all leading up to just 30 seconds or so of fading ocean waves. It's a beautiful thing to behold. I was able to work together with Desert Sand Feels Warm at Night this year on my record label, where we released one of my favorite albums of his, Drifting in the Sea of Clouds, on a limited edition vinyl run, which sold out only hours after I dropped it on the site. It was amazing building the vinyl release with him, as well as everybody else who was involved in making it come to life, and having the opportunity to work with him allowed me to realize how much he truly cares for his sound, and more importantly, the slush wave scene as a whole. Getting back on topic with Piano Soliloquy specifically, some other tracks I'd love to point out to you is the nine minute long I'm Falling Asleep. The sluggish, smoky drums just give another opportunity for Desert's piano playing to just journey onward once more throughout this track list. The album as a whole can feel very large and airy, and Desert's direction to focus almost all of the album's attention on his piano playing makes it feel as if you're in an empty hall with him for a one-on-one -on -one show. Expansive atmospheres all cater to whatever his piano feels like playing at that very moment. The final track, I Can't Live Without This Sound, takes the emptiness setting and turns it up to 11. The intense pairing of pure silence with just this delectable piano playing is a sonic journey in itself. It weirdly builds this tension as we watch the piano flicker into darkness and finally depart. Exceptionally rejuvenating, blissfully humble, and uniquely talented. 
Desert Sand Feels Warm at Night continues to evolve his production style with every release, as well as the slush wave genre in general, and I beg you to give this gorgeous album a listen. Let me know what you think and definitely be on the lookout for Desert in 2022. I know there's going to be some really great material coming out. Number one. My favorite Vaporwave album of 2021 is Incantation by Ghost. As I mentioned earlier in this video, I still find myself so attracted to that classic Vaporwave formula. As much as I've really gravitated towards sounds like Slush Wave and Signal Wave this year, this album in particular was one of the ones I just fell in love with upon first listen and made me remember what I love about Vaporwave so much in the first place. Doing classic Vaporwave right could be kind of tricky. It requires a great ear for songs to sample, clever and quirky vocal bites pulled from old 80s television shows maybe, or commercials to create a theme or world within the album's track list, awkward and unexpected pitch shifting and tempo changes, and just mixing everything properly to give it that classic, high-end, luxurious shine we came to love so much in Vapor from like 2012 to 2015. I see Incantation as almost a buffet of everything we've come to love throughout the years. Sudden tempo and pitch changes happening towards the end out of nowhere in the first track, LFL, smoky percussion and these super happy jovial pads in the track Dream State, corporate office skyscraper vibes in the track Rise Up, that damn sample used in the track Risk It All is so dang catchy and will have you looping it in your brain for days to come. And hey, maybe echo jams are your thing? Ghost has you covered there too. Echo to No One truly feels as if it was made for Chuck Person's Echo Jams Volume 1. Incantation is a release that definitely, definitely deserves some more intention, and I really hope this video brings some new ears to the album, and if you're a fan of that classic Vaporwave vibe, but you haven't been able to find it, you think, or like just newer albums aren't hitting for you and you just really love what Vaporwave used to be, this album is definitely for you. I know you're gonna love it. The whole album is curated so well. Every track just blends perfectly into one another. And that the, the, the whole thing just from start to end is a blast. Ghost created a classic that I think is going to gain more and more recognition as time goes by. And you can tell how much Ghost cares about the genre with this release. And the whole project feels like an homage to all the feelings Vaporwave has given us along the way. And to top it all off, Ghost leaves us with the final track, Welcome to the Broadcast an elegant and graceful signal wave inspired tune that just drops out at a random saxophone note, leaving you wanting more. Like I said earlier, let me know your favorite albums from this year in the comments section below. I am always on the lookout for new music and I'm sure you are as well. And I would love to just get a great discussion going on down there. I'll definitely be going through what y'all have to say. I hope some of these albums I discussed today are new to you. And more importantly, I hope I was able to add some new potential favorites to your list as well. Check out my deep dive on the caretakers everywhere at the end of time or a countdown on lost and unreleased music albums for more deep dives into interesting music. Click on one of these videos and I'll see you over there. Cheers and thank you so much for watching today and here's to 2022. Much love, your boy, and we'll talk soon. Pad Chennington.